questions? There's a way to, to get to the, to the underlying JavaScript. Um, there's less documentation about that for timeline than there is for storing map, actually. They have pretty good documentation of how to do tweaks to the code. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it would be interesting. You know, I thought that was really cool. I was wondering if there's ways to like switch views. You know? so right. Like, you could have set up a couple different views and other timelines to try to make different points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I really wanted um, was actually a tool that did both time and mapping. Um, yeah. Is because the t the story map display feels so similar to the timeline display. Like, well, can't you just put a timeline across the bottom too? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, that would be kind of my like um, ideal situation to combine the two. Well, you just take screenshots of the one and out of those media images of the other. Right. <laughs> I really like the idea of um, adapting something they've already done in order to sort of look at that content from different perspectives, like what does it look like from a chronological perspective, from a geographical perspective, from a PowerPoint yeah. perspective. <laughs> right, and how does that um, change in formatting, cha yeah. change interpretation? Yeah. Um, yep. Um, I had a real question, but before I started, uh, I, did, I have seen Mm -hmm. and so that you can see change over time. Right. So you can add different things to Google Maps so that way if you're looking at how countries and empires expand or contract over time, you can do that. And I imagine you can add different media because all you're doing is adding layers to yeah. the map yeah. to replace. And you can see that over time. So right. that maybe addressing some of the things you were asking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, um, you know, there's lots of different options yeah. for the mapping tool. Um, and I think the Google Maps is something that I want to look into more. Yeah, I just well. thought it was interesting you do it over time. The question I had, though, is uh, I think it was on the uh, story map we had, or yeah, I think that was story map. Uh, you were saying you wanted to be able to do some digital or some data visualization as well. Mm -hmm. you, had, you had the story map and you had the places where the women were executed. And, yeah. where from. and then uh, you had a meta media shot of basically just the points, the data points. Mm -hmm. What was that made in? Um, I think that was actually pulled from an existing report. Um, oh, so okay. it was some, it's, I didn't require them to make the visualization um, themselves. Sure. Um, I just wanted them to choose effective visualizations. Sure. We did in the same class talk also about free visualization tools. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the one that I'm <coughs> really liking right now is called Data Wrapper. Is it um, a wrapper? Like, you know, wrapper? Uh, WR. Yeah, okay. like it wraps. <laughs> okay. Wrapped in paper. Data wrapped in paper. Um, but uh, data visualization is another interest of mine. And I'm teaching the next class. I'm teaching is information visualization. So if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to <laughs> send you my list of cool online visualization visualization tools as well. Another one off the top of my head is Infogram, um, and all of those tools work pretty much the same. You have a structured data file, usually a CSV file, and you throw it into the box that they give you, and then play with it. Okay. So I'm similar to these tools, really. Um, low barrier to entry. <laughs> yep. I just discovered a new part of Google yesterday when Wayne was talking about Google Maps and layers. Google has a timeline option, which actually was a little bit terrifying. Right. Amy and I were looking at it and going like, big brother. Because <laughs> they track where you've been on the internet yeah. and like if you took pictures. So I like went back to the holidays and it like showed like the the day that my sister and I in California drove from her house to Target and back, you know, and then like the pictures I took of my niece's hair that day, like are all tied in there. Anyway, so it's just interesting and when he was talking about Google Maps, I thought, I wonder, it'd be interesting to play with Google Timeline and see how much you can place in there on purpose rather right. than them just like collecting all this data about you yeah. and putting it in in a creepy way so that it looks like they're tracking you. <coughs> right. I had not, I have not experimented with Google Timeline. Um, Another tool that I use a lot um, in classes is Google Fusion Tables. I don't know yeah. if you use that. Um, but it also is really powerful for quick mapping projects. Yeah. Isn't that the Google Map, is the timeline, is it just private? Yeah, you're the only one that can see it. But, but I just discovered it yesterday. It's been like five minutes in it. 
And um, yeah, me and Google were the only ones that could see it, yeah. Um, but anyway, I just felt like five minutes in it, but I just thought that could be interesting to play around with and see if it is something that could be used as a presentation tool or if you can, if you can choose to make a certain timeline public or whatever. Yeah. But it does the same thing with the idea of locations and images. Right. They're, both of those are connected. It's on the phone, yes. Maybe. The phone, because the phone has Oh, because it tracks like, where your phone is. Everything yeah. that you do. Yeah, so I mean, I was not. You go to the office. And yes, and yep, yeah. yep. So I looked at it from like day to day and it was showing me like, this is the day I drove to the office, and then home. This is the day I drove to the office, the grocery store, and home. I mean, exactly. it's, it's, yeah, crazy. Anyway. All right. Yeah. So as you walked in, you only got a sheet, hopefully an activity sheet, if you didn't, Mark and Emma here. Um, and we're going to take some time to just play around with it. How many of you have already used this tool a little bit? All right. You'll be, um, I think, delighted. And then if you have any questions, just grab us. Um, the activity sheet is on the Teaching Academy uh, Active Teaching Lab page, which you can get to from Digitally Active Teach here. So if you want to click on any of these links with, instead of typing them in, that is the best way to do that. But you have to type the, yeah, well, You do have to type in Bentley Active Teach, though, to do that. <laughs> so hard. Or do a so Google search for Teaching Academy Active Teaching Lab. Now we call it Skyping as it is now. They just go to Google and search. It's almost <laughs> easier now, isn't it? With Google. Google. We love the Academy. <laughs> as always, if we're very curious to see how they look on mobile devices. Oh, the activity sheet looks good. Yeah, it does. Is this, is this a Yeah. Cool.
it, oh, right, because there's nowhere for you to grab images. Yeah, exactly. So to do it in a mobile, you'd have to um, put the image in some place like a Dropbox file okay. or, oh. or a Google Drive file so that the image had a link. Sure. And then use the link for the image. So you can't like grab from the camera files? Uh, I don't think so because um, the <coughs> I don't think the mobile version of that the website recognizes that. Right. It, it like it doesn't connect up with your phone. Right. So it would need to be app. its own app yeah. in order to do that. That's right. 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 right and there's no there with with the iOS. Um, there's no like file structure. Like you can't. There's no directories for you to look in uh, on your uh, iPad. There are actually apps you can get that will create directories. Well, cool, I was just wondering. Like, if I have an Android, and so my pictures that I take in my camera all get stored to my Google Photos or right. whatever. Right. So I think the way that you would do that is you grab the link. Like the to the Google, in yeah. within the Google Photos. Right, yeah. yeah. And you have to make sure that any privacy standards for right. those photos were set in public. Right, right. Not the same that. story, man. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also um, Esri, who makes GIS, also has something called Story Map. Okay. Which is pretty similar to the Night Lab Story Map. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever use the, um, maybe you mentioned this, but I missed it. Did you ever use the Snap Map? No, I never tried that. And that was really fun. You're playing around with this, too. Like National Geographic, like any, any public. Instagram account with geo-located pictures. Yeah. So we like did it with National Geographic. Right. And you can like get a map of their 20 most recent pictures, and then you can import that and and then add your own picture. Yeah. It does like well, to crash a bit on the on the mobile. Yeah. No, I was um the snap map tool. I was gonna introduce that to my students for practice. Also, the time one, the shortcut. Oh, yeah. Because the work that they've been doing is more. Command F, not, not, not we'll cycle through different. Right. Archiving through tweets. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. nice. So and that's sort of the Instagram. What will that do if I'm already on the Instagram? Yeah, it'll cycle through. Like with a hashtag instead of with a Twitter account. You know, in terms of the archiving. No, I mean like. Um, or the snap map. The snap map. Yeah, that would be cool if you could do that. It currently lets you connect to an account. Oh, it's a different account. But if it let you, yeah, if you hashtag it, you don't hold it. If that hashtag has a function, yeah. Yeah, that'd be really cool. It just cycles through different ones. Okay. Yeah. I used to use that all the time. I was helping out all the instructors to me the first day I sent that class. Right. They were like, 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 I can't see where I'm yeah. going. When you look at the screen yeah. trying to draw it. They're struggling with it and they call me up and like, okay. so, so oh, no, actually, yeah. 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 They don't see it's a lot more impressive than it looks. I mean, it looks more impressive than it is. That spreadsheet into that. The snap map can't do your own Instagram unless it's a public Instagram. And, and I also have a geolocated picture. Oh, that's nice. I have a public Instagram, but I don't have a geolocated yeah. picture, so it was like, mm -hmm. man, you're boring. Okay, but you're not actually seeing the picture. I mean, it didn't say that to me. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, yeah. But they I mean, probably, these guys are like yeah, they probably open source digital cameras. Just send it to you, yeah. yeah. Right, I imagine. Yeah. I'm just curious. They yeah. have no sort of reason to be closed about it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody else in there is, you know, having. Yeah. 
that is the Probably not, but that'd be kind of cool. Um, part of the other, the other part of the reason is 
So you can like see your eyes go away. Yeah. In yeah. the back. Larry's. Oh, yeah, you you know exactly where. Maybe here also. So let's bring it back to a group conversation here um, in, in the next minute. And how how might you see this being used? So we started talking about this here in a smaller conversation. I thought let's open that up to a, a, the, the whole group. History is obvious. Yeah, I mean, well, in journalism, sociology, I mean, all the social science. Also, as well, it's really nice about this is it's, it's breaking off your stand, it's breaking off um, student assignments from your just your traditional paper, and that's what's hate writing a paper. But they can really get in this, even though they're going to write a lot. Right. And don't tell them that. Yeah. But you so you say this is what you're going to produce, and this is something that they can really think. I can really make this my own. I can really make this something interesting. And you start out and you scaffold the project over a semester or or a couple of weeks, and then they start writing those chunks. So they're still writing, right? But at the same time, they produce something that they really get invested in. That's what you're trying to get them to do, is invest in the project. And that's what I think is so cool about these different technologies they have introduced. So, Because yeah. the timelines have been around forever, but they've mm -hmm. always been paper and pencil, or, you know, and you can only, you only have this much space, so you can only write, like, this much tiny little stuff if you write it sideways, yeah. you know, shooting down. In this sort of chunked timeline, you have as much space in the world. Yeah because it doesn't have to fit on one sheet of paper. And I've seen students make some, I've had students do um, projects where they present, and they've done timelines on Prezi. And that looks really cool, too. Like, it, it zooms in on location, and it pops back out so you can see the timeline. But this is really built for it. And yeah. I think this produces a much more cleaner and uh, robust experience without the students having to build it, because you don't want them focusing their time on the piddly stuff. Right. Know, that's what they like to do. You want to focus on the content creation. So you're. So this is really nice because they can do the stuff that looks really cool. They don't have to spend a lot of time on it because you don't want to distract the frame, like The structure goes, technology goes in the background. Yep. The focus is on the content. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also they oh. learn doing it. Yeah. That's my point behind <coughs> the point in the map. They don't have to remember yeah. history. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the situating of, of things with the map, I think I've always been a place-based educator. So I've always felt like I've always loved maps, and I've always been interested in, oh, so that's there, and that's there. No wonder, you know, but there's these mountains in between here, so they didn't ever talk to each other. But these two did because there's a valley, and, you know, that was always sort of interesting to see those. Emily, you were. Oh, I was going to ask if you can, like, collaborate on the story map. Like, add people to it so they all can log in and add to it. I don't think so, but I'm not 100% on that. So. Uh, yeah, I didn't remember seeing any option on the story map thing. Yeah, the timeline JS is a Google spreadsheet. It's easy to, to, to remember. Okay. You know, but the and story map, I haven't seen. Can you embed it in two places? Like if an instructor wanted to create one for a class, um, yeah, can you can, take when you, that you can it? you can share it and then grab and embed both. Both of them, the story map and yeah. then? Okay. Does it look pretty nice? It, it looks just basically the way that you see it on your browser. Okay. Because we have, for one of my um, programs, for example, the students all go off all around the world, actually, and do, for environmental conservation, they do a kind of, kind of an internship for one semester. And so they like to capture that. We kind of use Google Maps, so this would be really nice because you could, they, you know, we could get descriptions and images from them, mm -hmm. and they can see what other people in their cohort are, you know, what they're, Working on and, stuff. and learning from each other is the part that's awesome. Yeah. About Can that. you like embed also links, obviously? So like if someone had a blog or something, then we could like you know yeah, go out to different areas. Um, so there's there's two different ways to connect to websites. You can um, you can use the website as the media part of your story map. Um, but as I mentioned in the presentation, there's some problems um, that can vary in how well it works from browser to browser. So really the easiest way, I think, to put links is just to add links to the text part. Um, okay. So the when you're editing the text, like the title and captions of each section, it just, you have a little editor that's basically like a blog editor, a share of blog editor, so you just add a hyperlink. Um, so if a student said, you know, here's my trip to Machu Picchu, I wrote a blog post about it, um, they could just 
link the blog post directly to that little blurb that they need. Back to the question of is it embeddable and, and what is, how does it look then? Um, I was mentioning the Jardina. It's cool full screen because you have more options. And even with your phone, it was like very limited to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So if you start, if you embed it as an iframe, and it's in one of three columns in a D2L site, for example, then you've got this tiny little window, and you might miss out on some of the cool. Yeah, we use it as like a little widget on the home page, so it's quite small. Yeah. Typically, I mean, at least that's how we're using Google. But to see it as an overview, small, and to be able to click on it, and I, am, I guess I'm imagining that it has an open up and full screen option and what it's embedded, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but maybe even a, if you have a small version of it, even with a link above it that says click for full view, you yeah. can do that. Um, another useful open source mapping tool um, is called ViewShare. ViewShare? Uh, ViewShare. And that's from the Library of Congress. Um, it was created by the Library of Congress as a way for um, libraries and archives to create public maps related to their collections. So um, if you're interested in this kind of thing, <laughs> It's useful, it's free, it's open source. Cool. See, this is the part of the, the, the session that I love because all of a sudden these other tools start coming up. And I'm like, oh, Google Map Layers. Oh, present for timelines. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, this might be a dumb question, but can you, instead of having a map, can you change the image that it is? Yes. Yeah, so there's two, I didn't mention this, but there's two different options in um, story map. The map option, and then there's also an option called gigapixel. So when you set up your story map, it'll ask you, do you want a map or gigapixel? And the gigapixel is basically you create the story around one picture, and it has to be a really high resolution photo. And you can choose the picture. Yeah, and you can choose any picture as long as it's high enough resolution because if it's not high enough resolution, the zooming part won't work. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the example there is they have a high resolution picture of the painting, and then you can zoom in to different areas of the painting and tell a story about that picture. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Are these all automatically public? Uh, like the default, like the tool itself? Or like if you were to create one, you know, and you do want it shared out with the entire world, is it just automatically? Um, I don't think there's an option to set it private. I mean, you could, uh, unless you sent someone the link, I don't see how they would find it. They would find your okay. particular. So it's just, it's okay. Yeah, but the, the goal of the development team that created it was very open source, public. Yes, based. And that was the request. Yeah. And that's when it says, what type of story do you want to create? You can choose your two. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention was um, color test. You can change the map under options. So I think this is a really ugly default map that they have. Yeah. Um, and so I use the um, open map, open street maps, and that gives. And you know there are other custom maps that I didn't dig into, but the open street map is is a much more. Um, I don't know how to manipulate this right now, but it's a it's a much better map that zooms in very nicely. Um, there's also I I can pull up another one. Is what I mean? Okay. I mean you can put in a link to any map. Um, so if you have a link to another map, you can. Um, can you put in a link to a Google Map? Uh, yeah. Okay. And. and um, or in Google Earth then too probably. I believe so. So, um, I'm just gonna. Oh, good luck logging in on my machine. I've got so many last pass things on my <laughs> setup. <laughs> um, yeah, I can pull Any other ideas on how to use this? One of the, we weren't going to put in searches on gigapixel, but finding a photograph that is of high enough resolution is actually 
like we keep thinking our, our resolution just keep shooting up and up and up, and our you know get these amazing high res pictures on our phones, but there's still that high res enough for a gigapixel. So this is still not as huge or uh, easy to do as, as as one might think. Although if, oh, well, that that's is, something that a librarian can help you with finding a high resolution photo um, if you have an idea for, for a project. So, I'm going to have to rely on the librarians. Yeah, so <laughs> this is, I made a story map around the same obscure topic, um, but I really like the watercolor map. That's cool. Yeah. Is that just a, uh, where do you get the watercolor map? Um, it's when you, when you, um, that's one of the options? Yeah, one of the options is watercolor. Oh, yeah. What? 